Hello and welcome to another episode of Chatting Films with Coffee, brought to you by Audio Technica. I am Simon and I'm joined, of course, by my good friend, Mike Elkins. How are you, mate? Very good. Good evening. This is a late one for us. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out of there straight away. I'm not actually drinking coffee because we're recording this at 10 to 8. Uh, uh, see, I am. I am. Yeah, but you're, you've always been a bit more hardcore than me, Mike. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I like a late night coffee. It really? keeps me up till about one thirty. That's sort of my golden time. I do some writing in that period, so that's yeah. I'll neck a coffee now, and I'll be be good for bed at about one one thirty. You live a strange life. You've um, you've always. I remember we when we did our first ever podcast like five years ago. You'd be up editing till about quarter to one, and then you'd just watch a film and go to bed like four, wake up again at seven because you're working in a school. It was yeah, I don't think I ever really got out of the kind of the student mode. Well, I used to, do, I used to work during the night, mm. pretty much at uni, if ever I had a deadline. And that's never really left me, I don't think. Well, even when we went to Amsterdam for a day, I never saw you sleep. You were sort of like, there was me and our other mutual friend who we did the podcast with, and we did a feature where we'd go to Amsterdam for the day. Um, and mm. as you can imagine, it kind of takes it out of you. Um, and so me and our mutual friend Tom were sleeping in the coach and I don't ever remember seeing you close your eyes. I just, I don't think I've, it's a good thing. I've never seen you sleep, but I, it's also a bit worrying. Yeah. I'm, it's like I'm some sort of nocturnal being. <laughs> <laughs> it nocturnal does take animal. a toll though. The older you get, the harder it becomes. Yeah. Well, half but... one's half one sounds like a, a reasonable, a reasonable cutoff point. Any later than that, I'd start to worry even more than I do about you. Oh, you shouldn't worry. It's fine. Yeah. I have it all under control. Good. <laughs> little background oh, yeah. about us there. Um, I like what... the Audio Technica shout out as well. Yes. Hello to our friends at Audio Technica. Thank you very much for these wonderful microphones that we're using. Um, Beautiful. Very exciting. Um, much, much better than uh, than the, the tat that I was using last week. And it looks great. It really does. I feel quite professional. <laughs> you look like John Watson. <laughs> 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 just not got the coat on just to, to complete the look i'm gonna lend you my coat one day oh, then <laughs> oh, <laughs> really <Please don't>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah thank you audio technica uh any other companies out there who fancy sponsoring the podcast get in touch um yeah. we will probably probably promote anything uh we thought maybe oatly i don't know if we can discuss this on the podcast we thought if anyone knows of any people at the oat milk brand oatly uh, they seem to have more money than sense at the moment, so chuck it our way. And they do make really good oat milk. Mm. Like I, I'm not a fan of milk substitute. Um, and as I'm kind of treading that fine line between vegetarian and vegan, um, I don't actually think I'm ever going to go vegan. But oat, the, the the oatly oat milk that is that sort me right out. Mm. The barista, their barista oat milk is really good, really nice it to is. work. It is, um, yeah, and it, it doesn't. It sounds weird, but it doesn't taste too oaty. Um, of all the no. of of all the alternative milks that are on the market, this is a I would say it's definitely the best. Um, yeah. So yeah, anyone from Oatly? So yeah, get us up. Mr. or Mrs. Oatly, please get in touch. That'd be great. You join some wonderful brands. I mean, we've done very well. I think so. Yeah. Aero Press, yeah. hello again. Aero Press, I mean, incredible. Yeah. Um, and Audio Technica, once again, thank you very much. Um, Mike, speaking of coffee, last time we chatted, yeah. you were. In the process of selecting your beans to create your blend, how are we? Yeah, uh, the, the beans are selected. They haven't arrived, but they are selected. Um, so I have been experimenting with the beans that I have in my cupboard. Okay. Um, and in fact, I'm consuming a blend now of my own doing. Okay. It's uh, so um, a filter. I, I really couldn't bring. I didn't have time to to do anything fancy to it. So uh, we have here uh, the beans that I roasted myself. So the Mexican, the Nayarita bean. Yeah, yeah. Um, which makes up roughly eighty five percent of the uh, the blend. And uh, and then that's, that's quite an overwhelming majority. Well, it was more just that was what was left. So right. <laughs> they went in. Um, and, uh, and then we, uh, I've gone back onto the, uh, the Kenyan, the unpronounceable bean, the double A from Kenya, uh, the, the black currant. And basically what I've created is a smoky black currant. Nice. 
sort of profile drink. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. I mean, mm. it's probably not marketable, but it's pretty good. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, what I was tempted and and talking of coffee. I bought this in to, uh, to show you today. You've seen it before, but I just wanted to tell any, any listeners really to avoid it like the plague. Uh, <laughs> excuse the rustling. Sorry, I can edit that out. So this, uh, if anybody ever goes to Sri Lanka and tells you to, uh, to come back with or, or, or asks if they want to bring back any coffee for you, tell them no. Uh, <laughs> As a rule. Or particularly this brand, which is uh, from the Monica Grinding Mill. Monica in, um, or Monaco? Monica, as in Friends, friends as yeah. in Chandler and Monica. Uh, coffee powder. Um, it's foul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's absolutely heinous. I mean, it, it doesn't even smell like coffee. Heinous. Um, it just smells of pure cinnamon. So I think he may have he may have just been just sold a dud and just sold a bag of cinnamon. But <laughs> it, 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 there is no flavour to it whatsoever. No, I mean, um, and, it, and it has the texture of sawdust. Yeah, I mean, we're obviously doing this via a, like a basically like a webcam, um, and when you hold it up, it looks like heroin. Yeah, which <laughs> I mean, he got it back through customs. Uh, <laughs> so- <laughs> Safe and sound, so I'd like to think it's not. I imagine if you shoot up with that, it'll probably have the same effect. I don't doubt it for a second. But yeah, from the uh, Monica Grinding Mill in Nagombo, which is uh, just outside Colombo, actually, if you're interested in your Sri Lankan geography. Um, crap coffee. <laughs> crap Terrible. Coffee. <laughs> and yeah, well. It doesn't help that... I mean, I, I got, I, the reason I got it out, I thought, you know what? The AeroPress, that kind of saves... Every, every any sort of old decrepit coffee that I've found, I put it in there, and it tastes. It brings it back to life. Mm. It couldn't do anything to this. <laughs> it Which, honestly, it looks, it looks like uh, brick powder. I mean, it's it's sticky for one thing. Okay. Which is con- concerning. <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> which maybe points more towards illegal substance. But I, yeah, I don't know. I, think... I love this. You never hear you never hear a roastery ever say, "Well, to be honest, we had eighty five percent more of this smoky Mexican bean." Yeah, and don't get your coffee from Sri Lanka. That's it. Next week, I've got a belter that I found that I'm going to try in it as well. I've got some uh, Greek Nescafe. Okay. Hmm. Which, when I first tried it, hideous. <laughs> but. I'm going to see what the AeroPress can do with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I is... might even try and blend the two, the Sri Lankan crap one and the even worse Greek one and see what comes out. Two wrongs might make a right. Yeah, this is exciting. I feel like this, um, this episode is like an ode to AeroPress. Yeah. So, but, I mean, that, 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 that's me done talking about AeroPress. But yeah, so the basic, that's been my week in coffee. Cool. Um, well, it's very interesting. Um, it's... It seems like you're scraping the barrel somewhat on the quality of the beans, but like you said, if anything can bring it up, it's the, it's the AeroPress. I think, I think every now and again you've got to, you know, I find that this is this is what I would call street coffee. It's kind of the everyday man's coffee, and I think every now and again you need to bring yourself back down to that level to avoid becoming that snob. Mm. Mm. I actually, I can't remember the last time I had a bad coffee. It's one of the benefits of living in London. You, there's very good coffee available pretty much on every street you go to i did one of the uh, shocker that i had uh it was in a place called lantana (laughs) very good (laughs) listeners of the show will know that that is where i work (laughs) yeah no actually that 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 was a really enjoyable good coffee in fact almost cured my hangover (laughs) tell you what i am excited about though is, uh, is the film that you're going to talk about now lovely link wasn't pre-planned very good um yeah yeah so a film this week um it is something that me and mike have spoken about before very excited to see it and very excited to be reviewing it um it is the latest halloween which incredible yeah it was it was a very good screening um, me and beth went along um and they had they had real life michael myers in the cinema with you uh okay yeah i saw your picture on instagram yeah it's a 
it was fairly intense. He was very tall. Um, and he basically just, he obviously didn't say a word. Um, and he of just course. followed you around. Um, the, the, the bit that got me mm. about that particular image. Yeah. His facial hair. Did he have facial hair? Well, unless I made it up. I'll have it a quick look. To me like he had an incredible beard. <laughs> um, sort of blonde, wispy, uh, wispy hair. Ah, oh, yeah. In this light and in this at this angle, it looks like he had a po- he's got like a bit of a ponytail. Um, but no facial hair. That's just the mask. Um, okay, so I, I did make that up completely. Well, you didn't really because. It does look like, yeah, he's got very, very long, um, it's great back hair and something of a ponytail. Mm. Anyway, I feel like we're sort of uh, <laughs> making it less scary. It was actually very, very <laughs> intimidating. Um, he basically, uh, I saw someone who we knew, um, so I made my way to go and say, uh, say hello. Um, and he was right at the front. Michael Myers uh, spotted me and followed me back to my seat because he wouldn't let me go past, um, which is quite scary. Um, yes. But then I thought, Hmm, how could I make this situation a bit more awkward slash a bit more comfortable for me? Um, so I hugged him. <laughs> okay. Straight up hugged him, uh, which I think he quite uh, enjoyed. But and how did th- yeah, I mean, how did that go down? Well, I seem to remember him embracing me, but um, yeah, I don't think he did. Um, he doesn't strike me as a particularly huggy kind of guy. I think he's a man who's dealing with a lot of mental health issues. Um, I can tell you he definitely is, <laughs> having seen the first film. <laughs> uh, but no, it was genuinely quite intimidating. Um, but the film, uh, I, as excited as I was to go and see this film, I was also a little bit apprehensive because, uh, first of all, it's been, you won't believe this, we harp on about films that are 10 years old, but Halloween is 40 years old. Yeah. But it's timeless. It is. And that is why I was a little bit worried about going to go see it. But I have to tell you, it, it's genuinely, genuinely very good. Um, I'll give you the quick synopsis first. Laurie Strode comes to her final confrontation with Michael Myers, the masked figure who has haunted her since she narrowly escaped his killing spree on Halloween night four decades ago. Laurie Strode, obviously Jamie lee curtis um 40 years on halloween is back and it's really really good uh first of all the plot so one of my biggest worries about bringing the film back is that is it are they just doing it to fit in with it's 40 years and is it going to be a very ill-conceived plot but honestly it really could have gone that way i really enjoyed it It starts off with uh, two podcasters who go and meet uh, Michael Myers in his insane... (laughs) What a podcast that would be. (laughs) But you know (laughs) what? I really enjoyed that because that's actually a really clever angle. That is basically like the making making a murderer vibe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, completely. So again, completely believable. Like, it it was nice that that actually you kind of had you were kind of on board with it straight away um i yeah. was anyway so yeah. two podcasters go and um go and meet um michael myers in the insane asylum uh surprisingly surprisingly he doesn't chat um but they do meet up with laurie strode and talk about the fateful night that happened for uh, 40 years ago yeah so believable premise uh this will shock you uh michael myers is on his way to be transferred to another asylum and all hell breaks loose yes understandable i'm guessing sort of reading with people die (laughs) there is some tension there there is a lot he appears in random hedges and behind doors and things like that yeah Uh, and mirrors at mirrors okay which is and uh, please tell me the soundtrack is still there of course it is yeah and actually like the soundtrack in the opening credits is done like it was just come out of the 70s or 80s it's so cool like the colors the font the uh the sound the classic timeless soundtrack um so that is very enjoyable um so the first like i said the first 20 minutes is very believable and then it turns into a straight up slasher horror um i mentioned it earlier but i loved how it references the original film 
um, and it has that believable premise, which is great. Um, there is also some really great cinematography in this film. Um, there's two or three really excellent shots, and I don't want to give too much away about the ending, but the final shot of the three ladies is fantastic. And I'm going to say it could become, it could become iconic. It's that good. Okay. Um, there's some really, really lovely shots. One where uh, Michael Myers is uh, on the loose and he breaks into a house and it follows Michael Myers looking in through a window and then the camera just stops. He walks off and about 20 seconds later you see him appear in the house. It's, it's really, really good. It's really nice how they thought about how they could make it as close to the original as possible with some really, really great shots. Okay. Um, so from that aspect, I really enjoyed it. Um, it is really tense as well. This film builds tension incredibly, incredibly okay. well, uh, which is exactly what you need from a Halloween movie. Um, that was probably the most tense I've ever seen a screening or indeed a cinema. It was, it was phenomenal, really. It was really, really enjoyable. Um, and the best way to break tension, in my opinion, is to have an audience member sneeze where everyone starts laughing. So that was quite enjoyable. <laughs> um, but it is really, really tense, uh, again, which does the, the original proud. Um, yeah. And this is something that's going to interest you, Mike, because there are some very funny scenes in this film. And Every horror should have comedy. Yeah, I, I completely agree. But this is like, this is genuinely funny. And I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why I think it is. It's because... Danny McBride yep. is co-writer of this film. And it's definitely heavily influenced by his work and his writing. Okay. There's a really, really funny scene where one of um, Laurie's granddaughter's friends is walking her back and we get caught on the lawn. Um, yep. And he makes a bit of a fool of himself. Um, and he basically ends up improvising with Michael Myers, thinking that he's the father of her. Uh, <laughs> and it's, very very funny um yeah. but there's there's a lot of funny fil uh there's a lot of funny scenes in this film which i think you will enjoy um and danny mcbride's influence I mean, it's an interesting it's an interesting project for him mm. i mean i can only assume it is due to a love of the original film i imagine so i haven't read an interview of him saying the reason why but surely that's got to be why um because I mean, the big thing for me was was i mean is is John Carpenter involved in any way? I mean, all I've read is basically that the idea was pitched to him and it wasn't going to be made unless he gave it the thumbs up. Yeah, that sounds about right. I actually don't know. Um, I should have done a bit more research on it. But I mean, it's, it's just an, like, I mean, if you're telling me that it's fairly, you know, if, if it's in keeping with the original, then I would suggest that he's certainly obviously given it his blessing. Mm. yeah you'd hope so and happy honestly, with it seen it and i'm sure they would have bounced ideas off him yeah for sure um it's it's a very very good comeback for franchise and you'd assume yeah. he'd be very happy with it um having said that there are some things that i feel let it down slightly um okay. so i was harping on about the uh the very believable plot line um there are some yeah. bits in it which i didn't quite understand um if you go see the film, you will, you might have to inform me, but I think I might have missed something because I really don't understand how they all end up back at Jamie Lee Curtis's house. Uh, and that bit is quite important given the ending. Um, so if you do go and see that, please let me know because I was a little bit confused about that. Um, there is a, uh, a character who is basically the doctor who has been working on Michael Myers to try and get him to talk. Um, yeah. He turns into a bit of a psycho at one point, and to me, that really didn't work. It was seemed like they're running out of ideas slightly. Yeah. Um, and there are obviously some typical horror cliches uh, with a victim falling over, uh, which Beth actually pointed out to me. She thought maybe that could have been something which could have been. You have to have over. it in a slasher movie. You have to have that. I disagree. I'm past that no, point. No, no, I just no, no, think, no. oh, really, really. But for me, there have been so few genuinely good slasher films lately. I'm talking in the last decade, maybe even more. If you're going to bring one back, especially one as iconic as this, you have to have the rules. <laughs> as laid out in, say, Scream, someone has to fall over. I do I'm see hoping, a I'm hoping somebody runs upstairs. There's a lot of staircase action. Yeah. I mean, it's... If you were fleeing for your life, you wouldn't go upstairs. 
But in a slasher film, you have to go upstairs. Because <laughs> but that's in order where you to die. tell the story. Exactly. That is where you are going to die. Upstairs, ideally, maybe climbing out of a window, falling to your death horribly. I don't know. But these things, they have to be in there. Well, you will not be disappointed. That's what I'm going to say. Good. Um, so, yeah, there is obviously like the classic art falling over thing, which oh, I, wears a little bit thin with me, but obviously for horror fans, it will not. Um, there's also not that much police around considering like a, a psychotic serial killer is on the loose. But again, you would know, kind of kill the plot line there, wouldn't it? If you got nicked after like half an hour, the rest of the thing is just a trial yeah. <laughs> about, about a, bloke, a bloke who doesn't actually say a word. <laughs> uh, so I do see your point, but. Yeah, maybe I'm being overly critical, but that sort of thing does get to me slightly. That's um, fair enough. If you like the details, that's fine. I do like the details. It, it doesn't ruin the film for me. It just knocks it down ever so See, I, I, For me, this type of film, it can't get... It needs to be dumbed down a little. It needs to be pure tension, mm. pure horror. It doesn't need to make a great deal of sense. I mean, in this day and age, you'd like to think somebody such as Michael Myers could not just escape from a mental institution, not mm. once, but twice in his life. <laughs> like in yeah. the first film, the first film, he's a child when he goes in. Yeah. When he escapes, obviously he is an adult. Who's taught him to drive? <laughs> that's, that's a big plot hole, yeah. So it doesn't make sense, but it works. I like it. Fair enough, yeah. I've just changed my mind. This is now going to be a five out of five film. Uh, <laughs> But no, you do make sense. Um, this is the thing which I think is quite important, though. It's not particularly scary. It's tense and it's slasher, but it's not crap your pants scary. I've never seen a film that is. Really? I think tension is really the only thing you can get from a film mm. of, this, of this nature. That's interesting. The actual horror comes up personally for me in the in how you watch the film. Mm. I, don't, I very rarely see those types of films in cinemas, but you sit at home, you turn the lights off, and you watch it by yourself, suddenly that film becomes a whole level of real. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, that, for me, makes the horror. Well, as I said, it's not particularly scary, but it is incredibly uh, tense, so I think yeah. you'll really enjoy it. Um, overall... Very, very enjoyable in parts. Um, very good pace of film, and it certainly does the original crowd. Um, it's well thought out and believable for the most part. Um, and there are some <laughs> funny scenes. Uh, but it is slightly let down by a genuine horror, I guess, uh, and mm. a few loose ends in the plot. So I am giving Halloween four out of five stars. But Which is a very good rating. I think so. It really has done the original proud, and that was the thing that I was really worried about. Um, so Halloween is out in a couple of weeks. No, Halloween is out next week. Um, so once it is out, I really, really recommend you going to see it. I'll be going, um, certainly. certainly. I'm pleased that they've done it. And I'm pleased that they've, like, like with Jamie Lee Curtis, got her involved. Just because now I've, you feel that that is the... Cause there's, been, there's been some rubbish Halloween spin-offs. Yeah, they have. And that's it's almost slightly ruined the legacy. But... Yeah. The first one is so iconic and it's such a great film. It's a bit like American Pie. <laughs> yeah. The first couple are fantastic. Yeah. And then when you get into your band camps, th to me, that's a whole different... It's not American Pie. It's a different franchise. So, so it's, it's like Halloween. The original Halloween and from what I gather, this, for me, that may be the series for me. The rest are kind of... Uh, Fluff yeah. in between. Which, oddly... Mm. If you will, you will bear with me. That actually brings me quite nicely on to something else that, we, okay. that we're going to talk about today. Okay, I'm excited. Um, in films that are going to be released next year. I, I think now is a good time. Like, to me, the year is, is fast, fast disappearing. Mm. Yeah, it's a perfect so we, time to look forward. So we need to start thinking about films that are going to be happening in the next in the next sort of year, year and a half, and um, whether we think they're going to be any good. So mm -hmm. obviously information on them is, is fairly low, fairly, fairly minimal right now. Some are in pre-production, some are in post-production, some are still being shot. Mm. Obviously all of these films may or may not actually get released next year, but they are slated for release at some point. 
That's a lovely little disclaimer you've got there. Yeah, so I just, you know, just in case. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but talking about the return of the horror film. Yeah. The Grudge. Okay, yeah. Have you ever seen The Grudge? I have seen The Grudge, yeah. So The Grudge. Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah. So The Grudge is a Japanese film. Yeah. Originally. Yeah, yeah. It was then remade with Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah. So there was an American remake. There is now a second American remake. Of the original remake. Of the original remake. (laughs) Coming out next year. Okay. In fact, they're being so specific, they're actually saying it's coming out in August next year. Wow. So my question to you, Mm. is the Grudge reboot going to be any good? (laughs) Um, No. Okay. Uh, That's all I need to know. I'm going to make note of this. Okay. And uh, when the films are released, I'm going to see if, if your, your uh, predictions are actually going to come true. Yeah, I'm um, happy for you to do that. I think, um, uh, personally, what more can they do with The Grudge? It, it, the Grudge had its own sequels from it, and now they're rebooting a film which doesn't need to be rebooted. Quite. I'm certainly not going to go and see it. No. <laughs> So that's okay. the first one. Films from so let, 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 Let's run through a few quick fire, okay? Okay, yeah. Hit me There's up. a few biggies. There are some biggies which we know of already. We've mentioned them a couple of times. Yeah. Joker. Oh, of course. Going to be huge. Although, and I agree because you tweeted the other day that you fed up of seeing sort of sneak peeks and pictures and that kind mm. of thing released. And I agree with you there. I think that needs to stop now. And they just... I- yeah. Leave it until the actual film is released. Yeah, exactly. Because I just kind of feel like it's it's so exciting when stuff like that does happen. And every time I see it, I'm excited by it. But I just think, right, leave it now. The whole point yeah. of the Joker is that he is mysterious. We are right. seeing literally <laughs> unfolding before our eyes yeah. parts of the film. Leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another reboot for you, Hellboy. Mm. Um interesting thing about Hellboy for me is the casting and recasting that is going on um, for the film. Mm. I can't say I'm particularly excited for it. Uh, Rocket Man. Rocket Man. Oh, yes, definitely. I think that is going to be a belter. I think it is. Uh, Taron Egerton is a very, very good young actor and I think he'll do Elton John Proud. Yeah. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Obviously. I am most excited about this than anything else. Um, fascinating story yeah. given the Tarantino twist going to be set up like Pulp Fiction I think that is going to be an absolute banger yeah um, absolutely and weirdly actually we're watching the latest American Horror Story on Netflix and they do uh, right at the end of the season they have a basically a shout out to those murders um, yeah. which has whetted my appetite even more yeah 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 can you have a shout out to the murders? Just like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, well done. Yeah, <laughs> done uh, you. Shout out there to the the Helter Skelter guys and <laughs> love your work. It's, <laughs> it's crazy though. I'm very very excited. I know you've been excited for it. For oh, buzzing literally. Um, okay, so this one doesn't actually have a title yet. Okay. Uh, but it's called a uh, Terminator Robot. Uh, re- reboot Robot Ter- <laughs> yeah, Terminator Reboot. Oh, that's half right. So, yeah, so Linda Hamilton, Arnie returns for a bit of Terminator. Mm. Seen all before, unless I think, I think unless it blows I my think, mind. I think it's done. Move on. Yeah, move on. I'm totally with you. In the same in the same breath, Charlie's Angels. <laughs> uh, now you've told me Kristen Stewart is going to be in this. Yes, she is. Yeah. Um, I don't know who the other two are going to be. Uh, you've got uh, Elizabeth Banks. Okay, yeah, I like Elizabeth Banks. Yeah. Uh, Noah Centineo and Sam Claflin are listed. Uh, no, I probably won't watch it. I like Definitely. Sam Claflin, but just, no. Nah. Rambo 5? Nope. <laughs> Forget that one, move on quite quickly. Toy Story 4. Toy Story 4, yes. Now, there is something we can all get behind. I saw on Twitter, I think it was last week or the week before, that Tim Allen as Buzz has said yeah. that this will make you cry. Even he can't watch you about oh, it. The third one was bad enough. Oh, it killed me. Yeah. 
So uh, I think that's, that's going to be a winner. I think so too. However, I think maybe this should be the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. But I think they released them in enough. There's enough time in between mm. to kind of crave a little bit of Toy Story. Uh, okay. I don't want to talk about Star Wars. <laughs> uh, okay, so three. Uh, so there's now there's there's going to be three releases of the uh, the live action CGI Disney variety next yep. year. Aladdin. Yep. Lion King. Yeah. Do you know the third? The Little Mermaid? No. Dumbo. No. Oh, of course. Tim Burton's. Yeah. 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 That, although the Lion King belter. Yeah. Have you seen the cast of the Lion King? Uh, where are we? Uh, Donald Glover, great. Seth Rogen. Yeah. Beyonce. Okay. As Nala. Nice. I'll, I'll be going to see that. The, the, yeah. No question. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tim Burton doing Dumbo intrigues me enormously. Have you seen the Have you seen the trailer for Dumbo? I haven't. Probably make you cry. Um, but it's really also cry. it's classic Tim Burton. It, the set looks like uh, Batman. Lots of shadows, dark. Yeah. yeah, cool. Danny DeVito's floating around in that. That's kind of cool. It sounds like next year is going to be either fantastic yeah. on one hand and Dire on the other. And, and I think it is. It's going to be a Marmite year. Yeah. I think people are going to either love the output or just be like, well, I'm not going to the cinema for an entire year. There's a second Zombieland coming out. Yeah, excited about that. Yeah, uh, pretty much the same crew. Sonic, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Nope. Not feeling that. Obviously, It 2, that is going to be amazing. Yeah. Frozen 2, flogging a dead horse with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess um, there's I guess there's legs in a Frozen two. There's going to yeah. be an enormous enormous interest in it. Yeah, but Disney gonna make, are gonna. It's gonna oh Disney are making paid next year. Yeah, get buy your shares now. Then yeah. <laughs> um, Downton Abbey project. So a new Down a Downton Abbey film. I nope. won't be going to see that. Um, in the bin. There's interestingly, were you a fan of Les Mis when that came to uh, no fruition? I, okay. I, I, I just don't really like musicals, but I, from a filmmaking point of view, I think the lamest film is incredible, but yeah. I just don't, I don't like it. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Russell Crowe singing is something that shouldn't ever happen on. I certainly shouldn't, you shouldn't expect the public to pay to see that kind of thing. <laughs> um, so next year we have Cats coming as a film. Oh, who is directing that? So Cats is being directed by Tom Hooper, Taylor Swift. Mm. Jennifer Hudson, okay, Ian McKellen, <laughs> and James Corden. Oh, I was with you. I was See, with you. Remember? I really, I've like one of my deepest, darkest secrets is that I, I quite like musical theatre. I know you do. It's and not, it's nothing to be ashamed Cats, of. Cats is one show that, yeah, I can, I can, I can go with that. I really enjoy Cats. Yeah, I, the cats I just don't my... know how this is going to come across on, on screen. I really don't. Uh, Tom Hooper, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he'll, he'll pull it out of the bag. Oh, I don't doubt he will, but I just... Yeah, I can't imagine. Les Mis, you have the historical side and an actual physical set and everything else. This, I don't know. I, I probably will go and see it mm. and sing along and maybe even go dress like a cat. <laughs> and Wicked. Okay. So I think that will work. I think that'll, that'll be work. good. Uh, they need to reboot the uh, the Oz world because the great and powerful with James Franco and Return to Oz didn't really work in my opinion. No. But I think uh, I think this has potential. Yeah, yeah, that's certainly exciting. Well, wow. so yeah, so that's that's the next year. I mean, there's other there's other stuff. Like I said, there's some film called Star Wars. Um, <laughs> mixed bag isn't it it's going to be a very very mixed i think bag. it is i think it is that the, the the real the so the, the 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 disney stuff that intrigues me a lot i think that's mm. going to be really interesting to see the lion king i hope they do it justice i'm sure they will um the cast alone is making me want to go see the film and also john favreau who did such a good job with the jungle book him yeah, at the yeah. helm of the Lion King is yeah. very, very exciting. Yeah. Oh, Mowgli is out next year as well. So yeah, I'll go see that. Um, yeah. Well, mixed bag, but some absolute belters in there. Uh, next year could be 
I think it's going to completely divide cin- like cinema goers. It's either going to you're going to be going every month to go see those films, but you're also yep. <laughs> not going to be going to see the likes of Charlie's Angels. I hope. What is nice though is that there does seem to be a a gradual movement away from the superhero films. There's a, few, there's, there's a new X-Men out there and there's a couple of others as a Spider-Man, but it isn't saturated with it. Mm. There are options out there now. Just being replaced with Disney films, which... Disney uh, films, well, I, I can, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Growing up with Disney films, I'm cool. Yeah, why not? Fun for the whole family. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the one I'm not particularly excited for out of the disney films is the aladdin um yeah it's been shrouded in controversy Mm. did you hear about the uh the makeup issue with the extras (laughs) this one they were blacking up extras yeah you just don't do it not in 2018 no there really is no need to do that no it's disgraceful and it's the talent pool that is out there it's embarrassing that that people would you do that exactly and yeah, so I'm not particularly excited to see that. A, a no. because of that, and also because it's Guy Ritchie, and I've got a horrible feeling that... I, Aladdin I've... meets Lockstock. <laughs> Vinnie Jones is the genie. <laughs> oh, bloody hell's time. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I can be the genie, uh, clearly. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah, <laughs> um, so, uh, before we finish this week's episode, uh, we'd just like to basically do a bit of plugging. Um, <laughs> the the interview I did with Olivia Hamilton that we spoke about last week is now out on the Verge website. It's pretty um, good as well. Thanks, mate. You you don't come across too scared. That's good. Or um or wooden. You come you know, for a you know, you I think it seems like a very natural, very fun interview. Thanks, mate. This is probably one of the first times you've you've given me a, a compliment <laughs> about yeah i mean there, there's improvements that could be made but <laughs> you know <laughs> no thank you that does that does mean a lot thank you it was a very yeah. enjoyable experience um i was slightly worried about checking out the, the footage but when it came out yeah it's, it's... Ah, it looked as if you've been doing it for years thanks mate That's, um... i mean less of you on camera would be better more of her <laughs> but apart from that i think yeah it was a success thank you mate um it is on the verge website and youtube and um insta channels and twitter so if you are listening to this please go check it out um it would mean a lot um it was a lovely interview to do uh olivia hamilton was great um and the film is out today the film is out today so go and check it out it's it's not my favorite damien chazelle film but it is still an absolute masterpiece um I don't that's like using word. the word. Mate, I was going to say, that's a big word. Well, Masterpiece. That's putting it in there with like the top 5% of films. But it's... I, I genuinely think, from a visual point of view, it is. It's fantastic. And I don't like using the word, but it's epic as well. It's an absolute... <laughs> it's an absolute epic masterpiece. You are setting yourself up here for a massive fall. <laughs> well i think it i think it speaks but volumes about stand by direct. stand stand by your uh stand by your gun so to speak now if that's what you if that's what you think then cool well i think it says a lot about the director that this isn't my favorite film of his and i still think it's a masterpiece um yeah yeah so i i really would go check out first man um i think you'll be blown away um blown away by the visual effects and how the story is told but yeah. Yeah, in terms of like, in terms of the character development and storytelling via the characters, not my favourite. Well, because it's, it's interesting. So when we, we spoke about it last week, I sort of went online and was just doing a bit of reading around about the film. And it is split people pretty much straight down the middle. Really? Like um, Rotten Tomatoes, which I, I, I generally have as a fairly good guide as to the quality of a film. Mm-hmm. 90%, they're liking it. Okay. Empire gave it five out of five. Oh, okay. IMDB are coming in at six out of ten. <laughs> okay. Then, so I think it is, it maybe might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I think it, it must have the potential to be, like you say, a masterpiece. It's a huge story mm. um, and quite eye opening, I think. So, yeah, I'm, I'll be going to see it. I, I, don't, I don't think there's any reason why I wouldn't. I know for a fact it is exactly the type of film 
that you will enjoy. Um, yeah. I, I think maybe it's, it's, I don't know, maybe a product of, because of how good the director is. Yeah. It's, it's maybe in the shadow of his previous work. Okay. Uh, Every, a lot of people though are saying that the standout is Ryan Gosling. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Not my favorite performance of his. Um, okay. But uh, he, again, it's not my favorite performance of his, but he's still very, very good in it. Um, yeah. I, if you were to say, what is it missing? I wouldn't be able to tell you, but I just, it's, I'm, I'm giving it four and a half out of five. So I'm being very, very critical, but it's okay. just, yeah, I mean, I mean uh, pretty much a lot of a lot of the stuff that I've read are tipping it for a you know at least a discussion about an Oscar. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, visually, it's incredible, and uh, Gosling does give an excellent performance, as does Claire Foy. But together, I just didn't really get it. Having said that, yeah. they are playing a couple who are who have essentially hate each other for ten years. So uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's that a pretty good it. casting. But um, I think that is that us done. I think that is us finished. Wow. All content covered. Yeah. With, uh, very little planning this week. Very little planning. Apologies if it's come across like that. I feel like Mike has saved me this week. Um, yeah, but thank but you very much. Really enjoyable though. Always enjoyable. Always enjoyable. The highlight of my week, as it has been said many times, but I could chat about films and coffee with you all day. Yeah. If only we could do this as a job. <laughs> well, once, once we get Oatly on board, we will. Yeah, so I was going to say, any other sponsors out there then? Yeah. <laughs> we're sticking with Oatly yeah. <laughs> Oatly or no one uh, <laughs> but thank you so much for listening guys and we will, uh, we will speak to you next week yeah it's been a pleasure absolute pleasure as always thanks Mike cool. no worries mate talk Take to you soon mate. Speak to you later. Soon. bye bye